Hello, my friends out there. Um, it is uh, great to have you guys here with me. <laughs> let me go grab my headset so I can make sure the audio is working good. Someone in the chat can let me know everything's working good. That'd be great. This is kind of a surprise stream for you guys. I wasn't thinking I was going to do this, but uh, I figured I'd share this moment with you guys. I'm, uh, I'm super excited uh, to go ahead and jump in and do this. I'll be watching the chat as best as I can. Looks like audio is coming through. So what do I have here? Well, this is a project I have been working on for a while, you guys. Inside of here are components of a board game that I have been working uh, on for the last I little bit. Have been working on oh, we get some echo here. <laughs> Let's turn off that audio. Okay. I'm working, but I'll be tuning in. Great. Well, just don't, yeah, make sure, hopefully your work is associated with insects. So shut off my audio here on my tablet so I'm not uh, getting interrupted with that. And uh, I'll keep watching the chat here. So I'm assuming you guys can hear me. Um, Beetle Otaku, all you guys, you guys can hear me, I'm assuming. Okay. Nobody said that it's not working, so assuming it's good. Okay. Well, anyway, so I've been working on this project trying to figure out a way to create a game that people can play to learn about insects and how pest management works. So I got these components ordered. I had a grant and uh, they just arrived. So I'm going to kind of show you guys the components, walk you through kind of what this game is about. And uh, I'll be happy to take some uh, questions in the chat at the end. So anyways, let's go ahead and let's uh, let's jump into this. So this just came in the mail. I have not opened it yet. I am very excited to uh, kind of uh, see what is in here. Let's uh, turn on the picture in picture. Maybe that'll be better. You can kind of see my reaction. I don't know if it's gonna be that much of a reaction, but maybe some of these components are not gonna be what I expected. I actually did all the graphic design for this myself. And I've been working on this, probably put in 60, 70 hours making this game. So I ordered these components from website called Game Crafter. So this is uh, my actual reaction of me opening it up and seeing, so I'm excited. Hopefully they actually were made as I designed them because uh, that would be funny. You'll get to see my honest reaction. Got some uh, nice packaging here, very nice. Very cool. And lots of stuff in here. You guys can't see it yet because it's right here. Look at that, awesome. Okay, so let's start looking at uh, some of these things. Wow, I am very impressed with uh, quite a bit of this stuff here so far, just looking. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look first. We've got these uh, action cards. So in this game, what's happening is the players are playing a farmer who is managing a field, and they're having to manage and deal with the insects that are in the field. I'm going to actually uh, move my camera a little bit so you guys can see, get it zoomed in on here on my table. So you guys can actually look a little uh, better at what I'm looking at. Let's see if we can move this cord out of the way. So what happens is there's these action cards that uh, farmers are going to be taking. Uh, the players are playing farmers. They're trying to grow uh, a special crop uh, called lunar wheat. So anyways, these are the action cards they have. They can, uh, they can do different actions. They can irrigate their field. Um, they can graze the field. They can send, uh, you know, like... Um, livestock onto the field in order to graze it. They can use different pesticides. They can do research. They can scout. Um, they, they have all these different pesticides they can use. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm like shaky like I was when I was first holding one of those spiders because I'm so excited to see these things and actually look at it all because uh, having it here physically with me is just uh, getting me very excited because it's uh, just something I've always wanted to do is make a game that we can use to educate people and teach. So anyways, there's all these actions that the farmers can take, but uh, the main component of the game is going to be this bag. And uh, this, I didn't end up from the game crafter. These I just bought on Amazon. I needed a bag and I needed these uh, little uh, gold things. So they're going to have money. They're going to be spending their money to either uh, deploy pesticides or check on things. They're trying to make as much money as they can. That's the goal of this game. You're farming this crop and you got to make as much money as you can. So they will have limited supply of money. And if they can keep all their crops healthy by the end, they're going to get uh, the most points and they're going to do the best at the game. So anyways, there is some money. The whole game focuses on this, on this bag. So let me show you, I need to get out some of the tiles. Go ahead and we'll move these cards to the side for a minute. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the tiles. So 
in the game, there's these different tiles of different insects. Hello, Flower Tiger and others joining us. I always love uh, punching these out. And, and this type of game, for those of you that are new to board games, um, uh, just one of my hobbies is I love board games. I love strategy board games, in-depth board games. This is not like your uh, Uno or Skip Bow or Trouble or The Game of Life. These are like actual in-depth strategy games. That's kind of what I base this off of. So it's not going to be the easiest to learn. But uh, yeah, so anyways, here we got our uh, insects. Looks like they were laser cuts. There's a little bit of like uh, burn marks around them, which is interesting. But anyways, there's these tiles. Very cool. I tried to uh, put little symbols on them as well. So this is one of the insects here. And the insects are imaginary insects that I made up because I don't want farmers to have any clues as to what these actually represent. So this is one of the species here. Uh, uh, just show you a few of those. Let's, uh, those look pretty good. I like the quality. Nice and smooth. They have like, a, <laughs> if you can see my hand, they're laser cut. So there's all this black uh, stuff coming off on me. So it's not like I'm getting coal from Santa. But anyways, there's those. Those are very nice. I like the quality. It looks like the black stuff is coming off too, but they were laser cut. It says this game contains laser cut components. They'll have a slight amount of soot on and around the edges. They will also have a campfire smell uh, for about a week after being taken out of the bag. Oh, yeah. Campfire smell. That's part of the free deal of uh, ordering these game these components from this company. <laughs> okay, I'm going to set those aside. I have about 100 of those uh, for my simulation. Here's another one of the insects that I designed. Again, uh, the same type of thing. This one here I based off of uh, an ant. I took an ant and then I took like uh, the on the abdomen, I put like an earwig. Um, Cersei, you know, like the back part of an earwig. And then I also took... Uh, and uh, change the antennae to give a different type. So it was originally based on an ant, but anyways, that's one of the insects. This one here is based on a cockroach, obviously. And uh, I changed it. I tried to add a little diff little bit of a crazy antennae to it to make it not look quite like a cockroach. But there's those. Again, uh, color coordinated, and then also those symbols um, in case color blindness is an issue. So I wanted to make sure it was color blind friendly. Um, so there's that. Let's see what kind of questions are coming. And oh, I'm surprised you're not using real insects. <laughs> well, this has got to be, uh, this has got to be, uh, um, accessible for folks. You know, if we had real insects alive in this bag, so all these, these tiles and these tokens are going to go in this bag. We could put real insects in there, but they would get all smashed up and broken and damage. So uh, yeah, maybe one day I will do it like with real live insects. That would be great. All right. I've got another one of these. So I've got quite a few of these. I made a ton of these um, for sure. I wanted to have a, a lot of uh, that one sp uh, specimen of insect. And then there's these here, which are very similar to those, but there's one little difference here. So if you can see, there's this little dot there's these little dots on it compared to the original. And then it's got those uh, kind of like jagged edges in between. This one here is one with a genetic difference. So in the field, you might have some of these insects, but then every once in a while you might have these, which these would represent insects with resistance. So there are insects um, uh, over breeding and genetics and evolution, the insects will build up resistance to pesticides. So in this game, in one of the simulations, we will have them build up resistance to the pesticides. So if you use too many pesticides, you actually will get some of them that have this genetic mutation and then they will reproduce faster. And then you're going to have all these issues with um, insects that have uh, a mutation. So that's what those are. And uh, I'm gonna put that one actually just back right in here. I'm gonna be having a heyday uh, punching all these out later. I'm sure uh, my wife and kids will uh, have a blast helping me out. So we got those two insects. Um, move those to the side for a minute. Let's see what we got here. Um, here's a different species. This one is actually based off of an aphid. Uh, again, I tweaked the antennae to some degree. Just punch those out. There we go. Maybe we need to turn this into an ASMR podcast. Rub the tiles together. Make sure you guys have headphones on so we can do some ASMR, all right? <laughs> 
So anyways, here's another insect species. Again, a different symbol based on aphids. I changed the antennae. I don't want them to look too much like an actual insect, but I do want them to look somewhat like a real insect. Um, let's, let's look at these ones here first, the healthy crops. Uh, let's grab these. Okay, so in this field, what's going to be in this bag? Inside of this bag, this is representing the farmer's field and what's going on with their crops. So when the game starts, the farmers are going to have a whole bunch of these healthy crops. Like this is a healthy crop at the end of the game. If all of these are left, they're going to get tons of points. These are great. You want to have tons of these in your field. The problem is these are going to be in this bag. So the farmers aren't going to know everything that's happening in their field um, at every given moment. So anyways, they're going to start off with a bunch of these in their bag. We'll go ahead and we'll just punch out a bunch more to stick them in there to kind of show you guys. So they've got a whole bunch of these, which are going to be worth the most points at the end of the game is all these healthy crops. And this is going to be played in a, a number of rounds, which are basically called like months. Um, each round is a month representing a month of them uh, working on the field and uh, everything going on. So anyways, we'll go ahead and we'll take these. We'll throw those in the bag, see how well that goes. Got to have those falling right by the microphone for that ASMR effect, right? <laughs> oh, somebody retracted their message. Uh, is that true that you can buy stick insect eggs legally? Um, I don't believe so. Where can you get this game? Says James, uh, James, James, Jamie. Um, I am just, I'm just, I'm making it, I'm designing it. So it's going to be a while before this actually comes to fruition right now. It's just for educational purposes, but, um, hopefully you guys like the components, what they look like. I did all the design myself. So anyways, the field starts off with so many healthy crops. So if everything goes great and there's no issues on the farm, then, uh, they're going to have, uh, all these, uh, all these healthy crops and have tons of points. But what will happen is insects are going to slowly start to invade that field. And as insect numbers grow in that field, some of these tiles, these healthy ones, are going to convert into these damaged ones. So you can see there's a little difference in the color there. You can see uh, I, I put a little bit of uh, what looks like chewing damage. So anyways, they're going to transition from healthy to damaged crops as the insect populations grow, depending on whether they're good or bad insects, obviously. So anyways, there's those. I'll just move those to the side, throw this back in. So they'll transition into that. Also, here's another insect species. This is based off of a leaf-footed bug. I just made those back spurs, I think they're called, just on that back leg. I made those extra wide and extra large. Grant Loomis says, this is the most amazing thing ever. Yeah, right. <laughs> he actually helped me uh, to design it, Dr. Grant. Uh, Thank you for your help designing it. Thanks for jumping on to uh, watch the unboxing. It's kind of fun to look at all this stuff. Um, so there's more of those. We don't need to worry about that. But what will happen is eventually if there's too much insect uh, pressure going on, too much damage, eventually um, eventually you're going to get a devastated crop and then you're losing all that money and those points at the end of the game. So they transition from healthy to damaged to devastated. So... Um, What's going to happen is uh, as the game is progressing, the farmer or the player is going to be pulling tiles out of this bag to see what's going on with their field. So they're going to be seeing, oh, crap, I've got all this damaged crop. Whoops, they're a little too late to be using those pesticides or uh, making good decisions. So they're going to be pulling stuff out of here. And this, the contents of this bag are going to be changing over time as the game progresses. So uh, let's see if there's any other different insects in here. It looks like we got a pink one here. This one is based off of a uh, this is based off of a uh, Pentatomidae shield bug, stink bugs is what they're called technically. Um, but I I took it and I added some horns on it, so it almost looks like a skull of a of a bull or something. I tried to add some some little interesting flair to it. So there we go. We got that. Knock those off. Let's see, Dazen Shoal or Dazin Shoal. This will be better than any YouTuber books, hopefully. Yeah, books are not something that I am interested in. I don't enjoy books, so I've, I've made this game. And, and the whole purpose of this is to educate farmers and uh, young adults about uh, insects and how they affect um, agriculture. Um, that's kind of the whole purpose of this. But I also want it to be fun at the same time, like have it be uh, interesting and you know nice looking 
for people to play. So basing it off of a lot of other games that I, that I play and I've participated in. So anyways, there's those, that's another insect. I think we made that. We have five different types of insects. Um, let's see if there's any other different insects in here, more crops for us, more insects. We'll just uh, put this stuff over here. And these guys were actually pretty fast at making these components for me. I think it took them about, uh, two weeks to get them all made. I mean, I did all the graphic design. I had everything ready beforehand, which took, you know, 60, 70 hours to do. But anyways, yeah, they definitely did a good job. Let's see if we got any different insects in here, or is this just all the pink insects? Looks like it's just more pink insects and more of the um, hybrid insects with the genetic mutations in them. Okay, so well, there's those. We'll just set those up there out of the way. Now these are custom dice that I ordered. And by the way, this isn't sponsored. I had to pay for all this with a grant. It's not like Game Crafter sent me into this for free. This was uh, <laughs> this was not cheap to print these components. How anybody makes board games and makes money, I have no clue. I'm pretty sure these guys are making money off of this, but for all these components I have here, which is like a couple hundred bucks. I mean, obviously if you printed thousands of copies, it'd be a lot cheaper and more affordable for people, but... I mean, yeah. So these are custom dice. Let's see what it says. These custom engraved dice have been crafted by hand and may have slight variations in color and design placement. Leftover residue from the crafting process can be wiped off with a soft towel. And I, I am super impressed with the quality of these dice. So this is like a little cell phone on here. I am just amazed. This is great. These are great little dice. I think these dice in total cost me like um, a couple bucks, but to have this all etched in there, this is like a clock. This is some money. Um, this is a tree. So what this dice is for, so as the players are playing this game, they're going to be making decisions as to whether they want to use pesticides, scout, or research insects, stuff like that. Um, cause they're not going to know everything in this bag. This is going to be a mystery. Somebody will be running the game called the field master. So kind of like dungeons and dragons, there's a field master, um, and they're going to be running the game. Um, Grant asks, are the pieces meeting your desired quality? Yes, they are. Uh, they are great. Um, I bet a lot of colleagues with big agricultural departments would appreciate this. You ought to reach out. Yeah. If you have someone I can reach out to, to, uh, get the word out about this, I'd love to share more about it with other colleagues. That, that's the thing we want to teach people about insects and pest management, but you know, we do it in the most boring ways. There's tons of books you can sit out there and read. That's why I do my whole YouTube channel is I want to teach people and make it interesting. And that's why I developed this game. Um, so anyways, what this dice is, so as players are making decisions about pesticides, in the real world, if you deploy pesticides illegally, you can get in big trouble and uh, you can run into lots of problems. Like you can harm the environment. Um, you can poison like the food if someone's going to go eat it. There's all sorts of issues. So the players will be able to use pesticides. So like this one here. This pesticide is called exterminate. The pesticide class is delicide. So maybe you guys know where that comes from. This is all made up, obviously. And then uh, the pesticide label has certain like parameters. Like this one says restrictions, limit to three treatments per year. Um, do not irrigate the month before or after spraying. So if somebody breaks the actual restrictions of the pesticides, on the other side of the screen, which I think the screen's in here. I'll have to pull it out in a minute. I will be rolling this dice. They don't know what's happening, but as if they break rules on the pesticides, I'll roll this dice. So we rolled it and we got that money. Well, their neighbor saw them treating um, improperly and they're going to go ask them for a bribe or they're going to call the police. I, I don't know if that uh, happens very often or not, but that's just kind of what I made up. So they have to pay money. So um, maybe they have to, maybe their neighbor calls the actual like, uh, pesticide governing uh, office. So for Idaho, it's the Idaho State Department of Agriculture. They call them up, they come to your house, you have to pay all these fines and you get in trouble. So you're going to lose money with that. Um, the other ones, there's a tree because you like kill their family tree and you have to pay a bunch of money. Um, and then the the time one is basically, oh, well, nobody, um, nobody noticed or something like that. Like, oh, lucky you, you didn't uh, actually notice. Nobody, there was no bad consequences. But there is a chance that bad things will happen. And most of the time it's probably going to happen. So um, that's what those dice are for. Um, there's there's a few copies of those. Let's switch it back to here. Picture and picture on. Uh, so there's a few of those. I'll just pull those uh, out of the way. 
and the quality is great. Like the way that this is etched in, I mean, it is, it's uh, pretty awesome. I'm, I'm very impressed with the quality, especially on the cell phone, like the cell phone. I'm like, wow, they were able to get that uh, spot on. Like, look, look at that. That's pretty awesome. Fiddle focus. Come on. There we go. I mean, the quality is great. I mean, you can see all those little buttons on the cell phone. It, it's not perfect, but it's pretty dang good. I'm very impressed with how it turned out. I really like that. It's pretty cool. So anyways, there's those dice. And then these other dice here are uh, genetics dice for in case one of the um, insects is going to mutate or something. So if we rolled that that many times, well, one of them is going to mutate. So Instead of having this one, we're going to do the one that's mutated with that little uh, black symbol in the corner. We would switch them out for those, and they would actually uh, mutate to have resistance to the pesticides or change in some way. So that's one thing that can occur as well. Let's see a few questions. Um, An art says, "Can you tell us the company you used? I've had a game idea for a few years. Hope you got a copyright or patent." Um, I haven't done a patent on it yet. I'm not too worried about it. If somebody else wants to do this and run with it and make money, that's fine with me. I My whole purpose is educational, so um, I, I'm, I'm fine with whatever. It's hard to patent a lot of things in board games because um, there's not a lot you can patent other than like the graphic design and stuff, which um, this graphic design is okay, but somebody else could replicate it easily and make it look just a little different. So I'm not too concerned about that. But the website that I used is called Game Crafter. Um, and, and it was good to work with. I mean, it wasn't cheap to make all this. This is kind of the, um, this is the logo here, that little one right there, it's just called Game Crafter. And I do lots of board games. So I found this out on uh, Board Game Geek is where I kind of found it. Um, what's the age minimum for this game? I would say it's probably going to be about uh, 12 years old. Uh, to figure it out because it's a little complex. The complexity is not like roll a dice and see what happens. There's actual like um, in-depth uh, thorough decisions. Here we go. We got an insect pin there. I'm going to move that so we don't have that stab anybody. Okay. Yeah, young adults or adults for the most part. Um, and Grant's helping out to answer in the chat. How many years have you been interested in insects? I've been interested in insects for... Um, I mean, I always loved them when I was a kid. I always loved just sitting outside and watching ants. So I've always been interested in insects and animals in general. But when I started to get into entomology was um, when I got into my graduate program. Um, as I was about to graduate, I thought, well, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? And I love animals and uh, I needed to find something. And entomology was where the money was at. So um... <laughs> <laughs> Craw Dust, uh, Crawford Dynasty. Yes, it happens sometimes. A simple bribe and the illegal pesticide use is swept under the rug. Yeah, I mean, those types of things can happen, but uh, I wanted there to be consequences. And I want people to think about the pesticide label, the farmers and other people to think that when you have a label, you need to follow it and listen to it. And if you don't, there needs to be consequences in the game uh, for breaking that. Um, let's see here. Where can you buy this? At this point, it's not for sale. It's just something that I'm making for educational purposes. Um, eventually I might make it so you could purchase it. Um, but th that might be a while. I've got to test it and tweak the game and play it with other people. This is just the first, um, iteration of all of it. I mean, me and, uh, Dr. Grant have been working on it and, uh, yeah, we're, he says it's in the beta phase. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Beta. We'll be getting to alpha soon. Right. Okay. So there's those components. These are the tiles. I mean, most everything is happening in here. So um, let's look at some of the other stuff. And uh, this is very large. I am surprised. I did not think this would be this big. Um, me and uh, Dr. Grant designed this little play mat. So we're going to have to zoom out the thing. Look at this play mat. This is the play mat that the player will use to help them keep track of their turn, um, keep track of their actions, and kind of how the game works and everything like that. This is for the player to look at. Um, so let's uh, let's see if we can uh, lay that out here. I guess we'll just throw it on top of everything. Who cares? Actually, I'll be nice to you guys. I'll think about my audience and not myself, right? Let's go ahead and shut off the pitcher and pitcher. So anyways, this is the play mat right here. They've got the banks. This is where they're going to put their money. And they get a limited supply of money at the start of the game. So here's their money. we got that nice gold right there. Um, they keep their available money here. Um, 
and at the end they can keep it as uh, actual part of their score at the end. So they're trying to get the highest score. Um, this here keeps track of the season or the rounds. So you'll, we'll put a little uh, token on here and then it will move uh, each round. So we see when they're going to actually harvest is at the end. That's when we score the final points. Um, this over here just gives a summary of the round and what happened. So at the start of the round, you move the month, you take an action, you can take two or three actions. So these actions would be out here. So you've got these here, you got exterminate, you got reaper, you got buzzkill, we got irrigating, we got grazing. Let's see, we got research. Where's our uh, scouting? That's right here. And you've got scouting. So the scouting action, if you pick that, you get to draw tiles out of your bag. So you get to see what's going on. So let's just say um, there's actually some insects in the bag. Just throw some in here. So let's say I take the scout action. I can look in the field and see what's happening. Because if you don't ever do anything about the field, those insects are going to possibly cause some damage. So I got to take five tiles out. So I take one, two, three, four, five. I see that most of my field is healthy. And then I see this blue insect. Now, as I'm playing the game, I can research uh, research that insect. Where's that? Oh, right here. I can research the insect to learn about it. And then uh, they'll get another card, which... Is, is another component we're working on right now. They'll get a card or a sheet of paper that says, this blue insect is this insect. This is the type of damage it does, whether it's good, bad, because there'll be good insects and bad insects um, in this field. So there could you could have a lot of good insects and you might decide, no, I'm not gonna treat yet because, um, because there's a lot of good insects. They can also deploy the different um, pesticides by spending their money. They can, they can do those. They can irrigate the field, which helps to kind of recover some of the field. So some of those, uh, some of those damaged crops can get converted back to healthy ones. But uh, the irrigation will also have some effects on the insects in the field because certain insects can be affected by heavy amounts of water. The grazing, you can go in and, you know, uh, basically get rid of some of your field. You go and they, uh, you put cattle on it to eat some of the crop already. And then you get half the money, but it also affects some of the insects. Um, based, excuse me, on the research cards that you get. So this is kind of what the players get. Um, there's these components as well for the players. I, I, I tried to decide which one I like the most. There's these little uh, man, men with hats or whatever. Uh, th these are to be used for the action. So on their turn, they're going to get these. They're going to take them. They're going to put them out. I don't know if I like the little farmers like this or if I like these ones more. Um, they're both pretty cool uh, little guys. I think I like the little meeple ones the most. So anyways, they'll say, okay, I'm going to do an irrigation for my action. I'm going to do this. So then they'll put those on there to show what they're doing for their actions. They can take multiple of the same one too, and they can spend an extra coin if they want to uh, take an extra action. So be extra proactive and use some of your money to do a few extra actions. So let's take a look a little more about what the field master is doing. That's the person who is... That's the person who's running the game, kind of like a dungeon master if you're playing D&D. &D. Uh, we got Johan. He says, uh, where are you at? I'm in Austin, Texas. Let's collaborate. <laughs> I was actually really close to Austin uh, when I was back at College Station at Texas A&M. So I would have been close. But yeah, now I'm back in Idaho. But um, there's definitely opportunities to collaborate. You can uh, reach out to me via email um, through uh, uh, at uh, the insect hunter at gmail.com. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Josh Hubbard, good job on this, guys. What field are you in, Dr. Grant? <laughs> yeah, Grant's still figuring out exactly what he's researching, but he's a great guy. We love Grant. He's helping me out with a lot of stuff. Um, combined expertise, definitely made this game very realistic, informative, fun. And yeah, and there's still a lot uh, to this. I haven't even showed you all of it. So anyways, let's take these coins off of here. And the last component we have to look at, I mean, this mat is awesome. This is huge. Like, this is taking up a huge chunk of my table. This is great. Super exciting. Okay, so we're going to take these cards. We're going to put those away. Let's get this mat out of the way. Get off of there, you little farming meeple. Those feeples. I guess that's what we'd call them, right? Okay, so this is, uh, this is the main thing that the... Um, I guess they're called the, the field master is going to have. So they're going to have this screen. And I'll try to see if I can set this up in a way that we can all kind of see it. This is a laminated screen that they can use. Oh, interesting. 
Looks like they printed it on both sides. It was supposed to be hidden on one side so that they didn't see it on the other side. Maybe I was supposed to actually upload a image on the back. <laughs> so we'll be uh, blocking this or doing something. I'll have Dr. Grant help me with that. But anyways, you can see everything on here. So this is uh, what's happening with the field master. It helps them understand um, what happens when the players take the different actions, how that affects the field. They've also got this stuff here of what's happening. So what's going to happen is at the start of the round, um, we're going to draw a card that says how many insects invade the field. So uh, maybe in one simulation, it says add uh, three, add three pink insects and add two uh, purple insects. So those get added to the field. We shake it up and then their round starts. So then the players can start uh, taking their actions. They'll start taking their actions and then uh, different effects will happen over here based on what they do. And then at the end, we're going to take those insects based on what's in this bag. And those insects are going to try and feed. So um, if there's any predators, the predators will try and kill the pests first. And then the pests will feed on the crop. So then we start having uh, some of those healthy crops convert into the damaged crops or damaged crops getting converted into uh, the devastated crops based on uh, how many insects there are. So if there's a ton of insects that can have a different effect and each insect species will have different effects um, as to how much damage they'll cause. And then over here, um, well, as that ends, so we're going to be dumping everything out of this bag. So as the field master, I'm going to have my little screen up. You know, you, you wouldn't be able to see as the other player, but I'm going to be dumping these out and I'm going to be hurrying and figuring out, okay, how, how many of these insects do we have? Okay, we've got, oops, we got everything flying all over the place. Get you guys out of the way. Okay, so we got all these healthy crops. We got these insects. We're going to hurry and try and get them all set so we can see how much they reproduce and uh, how much damage they're going to do to the field. So there'll be cards. We're still working on those of how much damage they do each. But we would basically take these and say, oh, yeah, these ones are predators. The predators are going to eat some prey. So they're, the amount that they eat, they like to eat two prey each. They like these ones first. So they eat these, and then they eat one of these. And then now these ones are going to uh, do their damage. So let's say they, if there's three of them, they do one damage. And these numbers vary, but we'd take that out, and then we switch it with a damaged one. So now we have that. And then these guys, their reproduction is fast, we'll say. And it all depends on the cards. Uh, they they double. So now they double in, in size. So then now that's our whole round. Um, and then these guys can reproduce. If they do, we'll say that they, uh, they don't reproduce unless they have three or four. Um, and it's not like there's four of them mating or whatever. It just is they, they have a slower reproduction. So you need more of them in the field before they'll actually reproduce, meaning that some insects reproduce faster than others. So that's kind of how that's handled. All this goes back into the field. So we put it all back in. And then the game continues on. Um, but if you guys have any other questions... I will, uh, I'll take some questions and uh, I just wanted to show you guys these components. It's been fun to look at it with you guys. I'm super excited about it. Um, eventually we might be able to have some way to release it to other folks. Um, but right now it's just an educational tool that I have to try and teach people. I just wanted to give you guys an update as my viewers to know what's going on um, and why I haven't put out some videos lately. I just have this project I'm working on, which is one of my big educational efforts and uh, some other videos I'm working on as well. Um, that are outside of the insect hunter. So let's see what kind of uh, questions we have here. Um, are scorpions very common in America? And it looks like uh, Dr. Grant took care of that for us. Um, Josh says, I apologize if I missed this, but how many species are there roughly? I mean, were all those cards in those bags extras or actually meant for the game? Um, which one? All of these? Um, all of these here are actually meant for the game. I, I, it all depends on the situation. I just have tons of these so that we can create different simulations. Um, they, they aren't necessary. The amount that I made was enough for probably three copies. So I, I, I made a ton of components just so we could do whatever. And it's probably not necessary to have hundreds of these insects. But if the farmer, a.k.a. the player, makes really bad decisions, you might have some insect populations that just explode and you could have 150 of those in this bag and you could have all those crops get devastated. Because using the pesticides is risky because the way I built the game, because we're trying to teach people not to just use pesticides willy nilly. The way I built the game um, so far, this one scenario, and we can change the scenarios obviously, 
But the way I built it with this scenario is if you don't use any pesticides, the amount of money you get at the end um, could be could be higher for doing nothing than if you use the pesticides at the wrong time. Because some of the pesticides will actually kill the beneficial. So let's say these are the beneficial ones and we've got these in our field. Well, you spray and you kill all the beneficial ones and no more beneficials come. Sometimes the pests will take off and cause more issues. So there's actual situations where you can do worse um, by using pesticides, which is realistic. You know, if you use pesticides incorrectly, you can actually create more problems than you actually had. So I want the players to um, be punished for making bad decisions. And if they don't make any decisions, then they're going to do okay. But in some situations, maybe they'll just get overwhelmed um, by the pests. So there's different uh, simulations, but there's five different types of insects in there. There's the purple, there's the blue, there's the pink, and then there's the orange, um, the orange ones there as well. And then there's also, um, I think I showed them earlier. Let's see if I can find one really quick. There's these orange ones, which represent uh, like a hybrid or one that has a genetic mutation. So, and the insects don't necessarily have a name and in each situation they will. So like in one simulation, these might be called fan bugs. Um, but in a different situation, they could be called a different insect. So I've tried to make it flexible so I can make different situations and use these uh, interchangeably with different situations. So in one game, this might be beneficial. One game, they might be a pest. Uh, you, you shouldn't go based off of what it looks like. I mean, it looks like a cockroach with uh, weird antennae, but it's it, in the game, it's not going to be represented by the behavior of a cockroach. It's going to be either a pest or a prey or like a neutral insect that doesn't really do much damage. They just like to come in your field and um, be pollinators. Um, let's see here. There's some wood scorpions in the Midwest. Interesting info on the wood scorpion. Okay. It looks like oh, I've answered all the questions. I'm just about uh, ready to wrap up here for lunch. Uh, I appreciate you guys joining me and learning a little bit about this. If you are interested in possibly collaborating or something, or you're a big uh, avid uh, board gamer, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear about your experience and kind of what you're doing. Um, that would be fun to learn a little more about it. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and uh, make sure and stay tuned to the Insect Hunter where big adventures start small. I've got some more videos coming here soon. I've got a specimen that I'm ready to put into resin. So I should be working on that after Thanksgiving and that should be out by the end of the year, hopefully. But anyways, uh, I appreciate you guys um, and uh, for sticking with me through this. I had fun opening it with you and hopefully my reaction was genuine because it is fun to see something you have created come to life and uh, see these components, which are a great quality and uh, it definitely uh, makes it better and much more exciting. So thank you guys for watching and uh, stay tuned until next time.